Hey everyone, Kyle Mike here from MLive.com, joined by Justin Rogers. Uh, we're back in Allen Park after a, a little layover. Justin, um, Martin Mayhew meeting with the media today about the forthcoming draft next week. What was your big takeaway from what Martin had to say? You know, we were, we were here to talk about the draft, but uh, while sliding in some housekeeping questions, yep. we learned today that the Lions are going to pick up the fifth-year option on Riley Reef. It, it always seemed kind of like a no-brainer, but uh, you know, I, I probably could have said the same thing about Nick Fairley last year. Uh, and they declined to do that. They were wishy-washy on whether they're going to do it with Reef this year, and and today kind of came out emphatically said yes. Still think they should work out a a long-term deal with Reef, um, averaging something similar to the eight million dollars that he'll get uh, with this one-year deal. Mm-hmm. But um, you know that was that was probably the biggest news item today for me. And that's possible, if if not likely, that yep. they work out a long-term deal. The Lions obviously have depth issues on the offensive line, and losing uh, a stable guy in, in Reef. Um, would be another loss for the offensive line. So having some kind of stability there would be it would behoove them. Uh, my big my big takeaway from today was uh, you know obviously the draft is a week away yet, but you know this is Mayhew's seventh draft with the Lions, which is kind of remarkable. I had to count it up real quick because it still seems like he's kind of new to the job or something. And this is his seventh draft. That's that's quite a few. Um, but it, it, you can tell he's changed uh, as a drafter over the years and I had asked him about that and it's just interesting because if you look at the character profiles of some of the guys he took early as a GM um, look at look at 2011 it's a great example Nick Fairley in round one uh, Michael Ashore and 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 uh, Titus Young and those three guys they each were talented obviously as, as, as college guys but they each had their own specific uh, red flags at that time and um, and there's a reason they were available if I got like Fairley or whatever and um, Mayhew said since he was over aggressive in that draft um, but if you look since then he's drafted a lot of guys like Orion Broyles or a Travis Swanson or um, uh, whoever else uh, Eric Ebron going down the line there's a specific um, type of player type that he's drafted in the past couple of years which are, are guys who are safer picks in terms of locker room presence in terms of off the field and you've built up a whole locker room of guys like that now with guys like Rasheen Mathis and George Johnson and James Ahedibo and Glover Quinn these guys all fit that exact same subset of, of player which is guys who you don't have to worry about away from the field and it was just it's interesting to me to see how how Mayhew has evolved and he said he did acknowledge um today that he's become more cautious since that 2011 draft and i think it has shaped his his philosophy going into this year well that 2011 class you know set the organization back and yeah. you know there's there's a time and a place for calculated risks um you know, but the talent, the the amount of talent in NFL draft is just so great, and the guys are graded on such a a razor thin line that uh, you can afford to to go with character guys and substance guys. Uh, you know, guys are going to be good for the locker room that that build chemistry, and and that mm-hmm. that'll pay off as well. You know, you want you don't want the me first guy, and yeah, the lines have been absolutely conservative. Mayhew will not shy away from from yeah. calling himself conservative in the draft yeah. process, but. Uh, you know, the 2013 class was was maybe uh, one of the best. You know, we've seen not just with Mayhew, but you know, Lions history. It was just such a great draft class, top to bottom. Uh, 2014 hasn't paid off yet. 2012 is is kind of a hit or miss due to injuries, but not character issues. Right. And you know, the the arrests and and stuff like that outside of this recent Rodney Austin transgression has uh, you know they've really tapered off locally. Well, the thing about Austin that that's an ugly incident. Um, but it struck me when that happened that that's the first arrest that we know about of Jim Caldwell's era here. That's 15 months. That's a long time in the NFL yeah. to go out without to go without a single parking ticket, seemingly. Um, and so that's a, that's a pretty good run for the franchise. And I think that just kind of speaks to the types of guys they're bringing in. I talked to uh, Matt Millen, actually, uh, recently for a Perfect. story that I'm working on. And he said something interesting to me about that whole the character thing that Mayhew's gone toward in the past couple of years, which was you want to shape a, ro- uh, a roster in a locker room with guys like that, the Ezekiel Ansas of the world, the Ryan Broyles of the world, you know, good guys, um, good locker room types, uh, team first types and so forth. But you want to take chances on some guys too. You need to you need to have talent. And at the, end of the day, at the end of the day, if the right guy is there for the Lions in the draft, if a guy has a DUI, it doesn't mean the Lions aren't going to draft him. Um, it just means they have to more carefully evaluate um, what he brings and where where they should draft a guy like that. And if they do take uh, a guy with with a red flag in his past or whatever, I think they're going to surround him with safer types and to avoid a situation where they bring in three straight guys like a Fairley and a Lashore and a Young, and then they're causing all kinds of havoc in the locker room. 
didn't work out for Millen. No, it didn't. No, yeah, I wouldn't take too much draft advice from Matt Millen. But, I mean, he and Mayhew are boys, and, and there's something. What he's talking speaks to what Mayhew is doing, which is playing it safe. And if you do take a chance on a guy, surround that guy with other safe types. It, it's been a pattern now for, for a sure. number of years. Um, speaking of one of those safe guys, uh, Mayhew did address the, the James Ahedabo situation. Mm-hmm. Um, said he was empathetic with with the head of situation he you know there was a point in Mayhew's career where he said he felt he was underpaid um, you know both defensive back guys um, you know probably underappreciated careers uh, you know though who knows if we'll see a resolution of this issue um, my guess is head of plays his contract out and that'll be the end of it yeah. but um, you know it's probably good to have a GM a former player that can you know at least be on the level with him on uh, the situation from from his perspective. Yeah, I've talked to a number of players and what Mayhew is like dealing with them, including guys who've been cut by him. I talked to Andre Fluell and who's been cut by him by like I think ten times now or something, and that's almost that's almost not an exaggeration. I think it's he's been cut seven or eight times now by the Lions. Um, but they and they all say May, the, the thing they like about Mayhew is that he's pretty straightforward with them on why they're cutting him. You don't always get that from GMs apparently. And Mayhew is pretty good about saying this is why we're cutting you. Um, and and so forth and so I think it could be pretty straight with Ahedibo whenever that sit down does occur I understand I understand what Ahedibo is doing um, he, he's definitely underpaid look at the numbers look what he did last year look at his contract I, I understand what he's trying to do and at 31 this might be his last chance to really cash in um, but at the same time I don't expect the Lions to it, it's they're not beholden to doing any, anything to Ahedibo and it, 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 he's 31 it's not like paying him more now is going to pay off for them down the road. They, I expect the contract to be played out as it is, and they'll probably go in a different direction next year. feel bad for the guy getting paid less than his backup, but uh, that's just the reality. Well, he makes about 100, 100 grand more, I think, than, yeah. than Rus- Russell Wilson's been wildly underpaid for the last yeah, four years, too. It, happens, just, yeah. it just happens. But uh, That's what we got from today uh, from Martin Mayhew. Uh, the draft is next week. We're going to have all kinds of coverage here in the next week, so keep it right here at MLive. For Justin Rogers, I'm Kyle Mikey.